All right, today I have five practice problems for you for derivatives. Uh, the first two, are, again, are going to be fairly simple, and then the third and fourth question will require a little bit more thinking, and we'll go back to an easy one for the fifth. Okay, number one, f of x is equal to x to the seventh over sine of x. The tricks you're going to need here are the quotient rule and your trig derivatives. So see if you can find the derivative of f of x. All right, let's take a look here. f prime of x is equal to, well, the quotient rule says the derivative of the top multiplied by the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. And this is all over the bottom squared. So I'm not even going to factor out anything here. This is the final solution to the question. This is all you need to leave it. So this would be uh, full marks right here. Again, that, that was much easier and probably not a question you would get on a final or a midterm. Question number two. We're going to use y is equal to 1 minus 3x to the power e. Now, see if you can find its derivative. Well, this one seems tricky because I put in a number e there, but just remember e is a constant, so all we're applying here is our chain rule. So, we take the derivative of the outside, so that's e times 1 minus 3x to the e minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 3. So this is really negative 3e, 1 minus 3x to the e minus 1. You can't rewrite e minus 1 any simpler, so again, that is a perfect answer for full marks. The e was just there to trick you. It is a constant. You must remember that e as itself is a constant. If it was e to the x, it would be a little bit different, and I don't think we can necessarily do it at this point in time. So, with that, let's move on to the third question, which is much more involved. So, we have an equation here. y is equal to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x plus 5. And we want to know where is the tangent line horizontal. So what does this mean? Well, the tangent is the derivative, and horizontal means that the slope is zero. So we want to know where y prime is equal to zero. So here we go. y prime is equal to, oh look, this is a very easy derivative. 2x cubed becomes 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Well, let's do some factoring here. We get x 6 times x squared plus 6 minus 12. And we can factor even further. So this becomes, let's see, what do we have here? Actually, I screwed this up. x squared plus x minus 2. <laughs> that explains why I can't factor it in my head. And this becomes 6 times x plus 2 times x minus 1. Therefore, x is equal to 1 and negative 2. So at these points, the tangent is horizontal, and you can simply plug these values into y prime, and you'll be able to prove to yourself that this is true. All right, that was seemingly difficult, but really not that hard. All right, um, I'm going to save the hardest one for last, actually. Here's a nice trig question. f of x is equal to secant of 3x squared. Let's find f prime of x. So here we have our chain rule, and this part right here might throw you off. What do I do with this when I have the derivative of secant, which we take a look here, f prime of x is going to be secant times something, tan times something, and then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which is 6x. Well, we're treating this as another variable u, so we're actually just going to plug 3x squared into each of these. So this might have seemed complicated, but if you separate variables and substitute, 
and do your substitutions in Leibniz notation, which is dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx, then this might be a little bit simpler to understand conceptually, but we just plug it into everything here. 3x squared. All right, and now for the final question, which shouldn't actually be that difficult, but I think I, I think the concept of the question might confuse some people. And hopefully after I show you this, it will no longer confuse you. So if we have f of x is equal to e to the x times g of x, and we say g at 0 is equal to 2, and g prime of 0 is equal to 5, what is f prime of 0? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to find f prime of x. So f prime of x is equal to, well, we're going to have to use the product rule here. So it's the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x times g of x plus e to the x times the derivative of g to the x, which is g prime of x. So this is our derivative function. And now we're going to substitute in 0 for x. So we have e to the 0 times g of 0 plus e to the 0 times g prime of 0, which is equal to, well, e to the 0 is 1. So g of 0 is 2, and g prime of 0 is 5. So this is equal to 7. So that might have seemed complicated, but really not all that complicated. It's just getting the notation around your head. Again, we did a problem similar to this where I said, hey, find the derivative of x over g of x, and it turned out to be something a little bit more complicated. I think it was actually um, g of x minus xg prime of x over g of x all squared, if I remember correctly. But again, it's just sometimes the notation is a little bit uh, confusing. That is it. These are all five practice questions. Again, simple derivatives aren't too difficult. When we get into other things like implicit differentiation, logarithmic, logarithmic, I can't, I can't say that word. I just can't say that word. Log, log differentiation, and inverse trig differentiation. Things will get a little bit more difficult, but until then, these questions, you're just going to find tangent line questions. That's it. So, next video, I think we're going to do some inverse trig, or maybe just inverses in general.